Chris Wessling and Mark Sessler are on the beat as the projected starter series is on its way up online at NFL.com. Right now we're talking the AFC North and some of the pressing questions facing the teams in that division. Let's start off by looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chris. You take a look at a team that has seen the departure of a ton of veterans like Troy Polamalu, notably on this team, Jason Worlds, among others. How do you fill all those holes on a team that uh, used to be known for its veteran leadership? Well, I think the question is, how are these guys going to replace the retired players? Troy Polamalu, who left at the urging, basically, of the Steelers, and Jason Worlds, who was a surprise retirement. You've got Jarvis Jones, a former first-round pick, who's been a disappointment to date for injuries and ineffectiveness. And another disappointment, Shamarco Thomas, is expected to take over for Palomalo. He's been unable to get off the bench for two years, so huge question marks on how these guys are going to be replaced. I don't think you, you can really ask someone to come in and fill the shoe, shoes of a, of a Troy Palomalo. That's absurd, but it's about shifting what they do on defense, maybe attacking opponents a little bit differently, because Palomalo gave them so many options. But, you know, they talk about James Harrison, who's at this point like 47 years old, that he's going to have reduced snaps. I honestly don't buy it. We talked about this in the newsroom with Chris and I yesterday, that he's probably going to start coming out of the season until some of these younger players come into form. You know, Bud Dupree in the first round. I want to know if he'll be one of the rare Steelers rookies that sees more playing time out of the gate. That's unusual for defensive guys in Pittsburgh. Yes. Right. Lamar Woodley sat for a while. Jarvis Jones sat for a while. It takes a while to learn Dick LeBeau's system. Yeah, kind of a case of be careful what you wish for, too, because we've talked about how this defense needed to get younger. Now they have to get younger by necessity because some older guys are leaving. We'll move on to the Baltimore Ravens who in the draft took uh, wide receiver Rashad Perryman and tight end Max Williams. How quickly will these guys be able to contribute on this offense? Well, you know, if they wanted to bring them along slowly, that's another team that does not have the luxury of doing so. When Torrey Smith went out the door and with Dennis Pitt at tight end, you don't know if he's going to play this season. Rashad Perriman's going to have to step in along Steve Smith and be that number two, if not a number one right, wide receiver right out of the gate. They like him. I think he's got in, some freaky skills, but he had a drop issue in college as well, so he's going to have to overcome that. Max Williams was really the only tight end of name in the draft, and the Ravens traded up for him. So I think they like that he can fit in right away. I don't know, Chris, you think this can happen? Well, we spent the past few weeks talking about you reviewed all the rookie tight ends from last year, and... The point we kept coming back to is you just don't see rookie tight ends come in and make an impact. It's the one position where you need a year or two to learn the game. So I think if you're relying on Max Williams to be a major part of your passing game, you're going to end up disappointed. The one thing I like about Mark Tressman stepping into offensive coordinator is that he didn't blow up the machine. He said they're going to keep that zone blocking system that they had last year that sprung Justin Forsett for 1,200-plus yards. So I like that they didn't go and change that because they have the right type of lineman for that finally. I think it's still a run-heavy team if they need to be. Nick will literally, by the way, takes offense to you saying that uh, Williams was the only tight end of note in the draft. Just an aside. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the Bengals now, a team that was 32nd in the league last in sacks in 2014. Have they done enough to bolster the pass rush? No, I think if you ask the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if they've done enough, they would say no because they had Michael Johnson last year, and he was one of the big, biggest free agent busts out there. I think he only had three sacks. So you, this is who you're bringing in to fix your pass rush. And he did play better with the Bengals a few years ago, but a guy who isn't getting sacks on his own, he usually needs Geno Atkins to take up multiple blockers so he can defeat one-on-one -on -one matchups. I just don't think the Bengals have fixed this problem. Yeah, and they're asking guys like Wallace Gilberry and Carlos Dunlap to be better than they were last year. That's a, We'll see if that happens. And then a guy like Margus Hunt, who really has, I don't want to call him a project, but he's not necessarily bloomed into a difference-making player. He's going to have to take more snaps as well. They, they focused on the offensive line. I almost would have liked to see one of those picks be a defensive lineman. I agree. I think the offensive lineman won't play for a year, but Margus Hunt's a guy they've been talking up for two years now and really has only played 10 or 11 snaps a game. Yeah. Moving on to the final team in the division, you've got the Browns, a team that focused on their offensive and defensive lines this offseason. But really, at the end of the day, isn't it all about making life easier for guys like Josh McCown and Johnny Manziel? Well, I mean, you're the only team in this division without a quarterback that you can point to and say he's been to the playoffs, he's taken us there. And, yeah, so Josh McCown and Manziel, that's going to get all the attention. But the Browns, listen, they tried to trade for Sam Bradford. They tried to trade up for Marcus Mariota. I mean, they gave it an effort. And at some point, you got to say, listen, if the guy's not there, we're going to have to roll with what we have. And I kind of like what Cleveland did in the draft, which just says we've been pushed around on defense since 1999. People have been running on us at will. We're going to build that defensive lineup. We're going to bring some outside linebackers in to brush the passer, and let's get tougher. It's not a terrible strategy. I find it impossible to kind of knock the Browns for not picking up a better quarterback. Like you said, they tried. 
Aaron Rodgers wasn't available, what do you want them to do? Josh McCown was the best available quarterback this year, which says a lot about teams in need of quarterbacks. You just don't go out and sign free agent starters at the position. I mean, the reality is it could put that coaching staff into a tough spot if they're coming out of this season with four or five wins. But they tried. And, and people want to kill Cleveland no matter what they do. But as some of these other players, they went and drafted work, they can, they can make some difference making games in this division with how tough they got. I do think they're a different team than they were a couple of years ago. Certainly after pre agency in the draft, it's all sunshine and roses among all the right. teams. They're all optimistic. But in the reality, when you start looking at the roster, some of those questions do come out. And of course, those are just a few of the lingering questions that are facing teams in the AFC North. Of course, Mark, Chris, and the rest of the ATN crew are rolling out their team by team. Question marks and projected starters, you can catch those online at nfl.com slash around the NFL.